Hello and welcome to the next section of Awesome, chapter 6 to 9. I hope you enjoyed chapters 1 to 5. Got a few of you said that you enjoyed it and it went well. So I'm glad to help. Uh, good news is that the book is done and dusted. You can now get the book Awesome and Gedichte, all those poem summaries that you have probably seen the videos for. I've been uploading it for the last few days. Um, so all 12 of the poems, all the notes, uh, and awesome, all the summaries, the whole book, and the questions are available now. Uh, you can get the book at CNA. Uh, far cheaper option would just be to get the ebook from ITSI. Or you can order directly from me. It'll also be very cheap. Uh, I'll do like a six book minimum if you don't mind. So if you can club in with your friends and just get a few books or get your, your class to order. Email me there, WhatsApp, that's my WhatsApp. Uh, please share this uh, this video, like and share, and subscribe as well, please. That really helps me out, so you also keep up to date with all the videos coming through. Okay, let's go on with chapter 6 to 9 of Awesome. I just want to double check that we are recording. Uh, yes, we are. Okay, let's move. Okay, so by now we're into the story. And chapter 6 starts where... Uh, Boris gets a, he gets quite a bad nightmare, okay? What is this nightmare? The nightmare is that he gave Paul Brannevein, but next gebeur, nothing happens, okay? And uh, th this was his goal, remember? From the very first page, we saw that he wants to poison his dad. He hates his father for the abuse that he suffered from his father. In the, in the nightmare, they, he takes off his leather belt, like he always used to do when he was a child. Boris wants to flee, but because it's a nightmare, his legs are um, lumps. They've been as lumps. His legs are tired, his, his legs go numb, and they don't work. So what a terrible nightmare. So they could, they could ask you to describe uh, the nightmare. Uh, so one, two, three aspects there. The brandy, nothing happens uh, with the poison, the leather belt, the one, two, and he wants to flee, but his legs are numb. Three mocks. Okay. I'm not kidding. Those kind of questions pop up in tests and in exams. All right. So, so now he's packing because now he has to go to his father, remember? So she's, his mother packs more clothes because... He just packed enough for three days. He's like, meh, I'm going to be back. I'm sure it won't be that long. He only packs enough for three days. Um, and he's not allowed to get his phone. Mag nie sy phone kry nie. Sy ma wil hee dat hy nie met sy vriende praat nie. Okay, so his mother wants him not to talk to his friends. Why would that be the case? Well, it's probably so that they can't... Uh, they can't compare stories. They can't make their own, make up their plans, make up their own lies, and also that Boris, Boris doesn't get that negative influence that he gets from his friends. His mom wants him to now move on from this and to go to his dad, cut all bad ties, cut off all bad friends, and move on. So that would be a good question in a test or exam. Why she doesn't want him to get a phone? So she says, however, that she'll give him a new phone when he gets there. <coughs> that is, that his dad will have a phone ready. Okay, so say so Ma pak all his besittings, all his possessions, he packs it. In geval hy permanent gaan bly. So she's like, nah, he's probably going to stay permanently. So I'm packing all his stuff. Okay, CD player, surround sound system, squid reconnoir, laptop, DVD player. Klankverstärker, his amplifier, his PlayStation, his cricket bat, and his medals. That could also be a question. What things uh, does his mom pack? What things does she pack for him to go permanently to his father? So you need to know. You need to literally go and like rote learn the things that she's packing. Okay, so Ma voel baie emotioneel en voel of sy ook rehabilitatie nodig het. She's, she's very emotional, obviously. She's worn out about this whole event. Um, uh, 
this court case that is looming, the big, big trouble that uh, in his, her boy's drug habits has really worn her down. She feels like she also needs rehabilitation, that he's not the only one, that Paris is not the only one. So his mom goes on and she tells him a little bit about Paul, his father. She says, hey, Skilder, he does painting, he's an artist, and he does some sculpting, so those, those stone carvings and things, and he also like does molds, okay? She says, he had ingenieurswese studeer, maar hy kon nie klaar maak nie. So he studied engineering, but he never finished his degree. Okay, so that's important background information about Paul. So this is not an unintelligent man. This is not some total loser. He's quite arty. He was quite academic. Something clearly went wrong in his life. That's the feeling we get. Okay, something fundamentally went wrong. And obviously we'll find out later in the book. How did he end up there at the sea? Well, he had geld from his opa geërf. He inherited the, uh, money from his father. That would be, no, sorry, from his grandfather. So that would be Barry's great-grandfather. And he bought this plot of land next to the sea. All right, so how do they actually make sure, the police, that Barry's gets to where he should be? Well, they send a police officer, a sergeant, a sergeant little young sergeant with, with Paris. Om seker te maak, hy kom by sy paar uit. Sergeant Schreder. Okay, very important character. Um, he asks his mom that she lets Lizette know where he's going and why he couldn't say goodbye. Okay, that's also important for later because I gal, I'll spoil it a bit. I'll, I'll and tell you that his mom didn't do it. She did not tell Lizette that he um, said, said goodbye and that he couldn't greet her and his friends. Okay, so who is this Sashant Schreder? Well, she's 24 years old and Barry's immediately thinks, wow, she's too young. She's too young to like look after me. I'm not sure what he means by she's too young, but um, as we'll see, he finds her incredibly attractive. She's a good-looking uh, young woman, and um, Barry's obviously being a, a young high school boy. He he notices this instantly. Her her name is actually Nicoline, but she asks Barry to call her Nico. So Nico, obviously a boy's name, quite a, quite a masculine uh, male name. However, it's short for Nicolene, and that's what her friends call her. So that puts an interesting sort of slant on her character as well. She gives some background information. I don't know how important this would be, but you never know. Um, her parents live in Randburg. Randburg. Her verloofde is a makelaar. So her fiancé is a broker, and they're actually getting married in a year's time. Okay, so young police sergeant. Um, getting married, escorting this criminal, <laughs> this criminal Barry's now to, 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 to his father. On the bus, he he talks to her. They put a, they get on the bus. And he has to, she has to escort him. He tells her everything. Uh, he speaks quite uh, freely. He speaks quite easily to her. He tells her about Lizette, his cricket, his athletics, his Gibson guitar. It's expensive prized possession, and all the songs that he writes. Okay, so those are quite, it's quite uh, telling that he just shares all this personal information with her. So there I just took a note, I said, I bewoner, where's my, um, I bewoner die beeld skoon Nico. So he, he ad really admires this beautiful police sergeant with her blonde hair. While she's sleeping next to him in the bus, he watches her sleep. Okay. So they, they drive via Bloemfontein, Kolsberg, Kolsberg, Port Elizabeth, Jeffrey's Bar, Himmelsdorp, and eventually they stop at an engine garage and they are hungry and Barry's goes and he buys uh, two pies 
from a from a shop called Tant Melissa Oort. This might pop up somewhere like a mix and match question or something like that. Just take note of that. Okay. Then they talk a little bit about Captain Faker. This was that the, the, the big uh, policeman, bald head, big strong, older policeman, um, the captain. He was in charge of this case. Okay. Boris, his reaction obviously is that, oh, this guy absolutely hates me. He just like hates my guts. But Nico gives him some perspective. She says he actually cares. I hear eindelijk om. Why? This is important. Omdat sy eie sien met Mandrax en heroin betrokke was. His own son was involved in drugs and he was sent to jail for 10 years. So he has first hand personal experience of what it feels like for a child. The pain, the suffering, like what his mom, Boris's mom would feel. He, this, Captain Feker knows what it feels like. That is why he made this plan. Okay. He could quite easily have just have made him sort of rot in jail. But something made him just think a little bit. And they came to this agreement. But I said that they weet van die ooreenkoms. Wat die procureurs en die politie gemaakt het. So there was some agreement between the lawyers and the police. And that's the reason. Why he's going, he has to go to his dad. So it's a court order. It's part of his re rehabilitation. So they're obviously going to have different charges for, for all the, uh, the characters involved in the accident. All right. Um, Boris wasn't the driver, but he was the supplier of the, of the drugs. So he's pretty culpable as well. So Nico tells him that the fact that there's this agreement shows that this captain that he cares. Okay. So help Barry some say oog trippels in te sit. So the, he has like these red scratchy eyes. Um, probably because he's withdrawing from, from the Dacha. And when she, when, when uh, Sashan Schrede, Nico, when she gets very close, he really admires her and he almost kisses her, which would have been a, <laughs> Probably a massive, massive mistake. Um, fortunately, he does not. So they arrive at the garage and a red beach buggy turns in. And as a reader at this stage, we think, oh, this is Barry's father. This is his father fetching him from the from where the bus is dropping him. But it's not. Okay. But it's, it's a long bearded man. He's quite messy. He's, he's by slordig. He has a dark tanned skin. And he gets out and asks if he is Baras, not Baris. Baras. He got the name wrong, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally. We, we don't really um, we don't really know. So that is that is essentially chapter six. Okay. And as you'll see in the in the book. Um, in this book, there are questions, and this is oh shove it. This is what the questions look like. So there, yeah, I put down not like obvious obvious questions, but it's just some things that will make you think. And I'm hoping that you can do them in class, or you can do them with your mates, um, and think about them, and just get your teacher to help you to answer these questions. I think you'll really find them quite valuable. These these questions. So think about those questions. Um, I did put the English in brackets as well. That'll really give you the gist, like the, the, the most important things from, from that chapter. So I don't try and ask like 10 million like stupid little questions about the details because you can just go and learn that, hopefully. Okay. So moving on to chapter seven. Um, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger in case you can't see properly um, on the video. Uh, like this, eh? There we go. With stick zero. Okay, short little chapter. Barish dinkti mana se pa. So he thinks that the man fetching him is actually 
is his dad, but it's actually not. It's his it's his dad's friend, and as we'll see, very very good friends. Um, they actually grew up together. It came came out later. Steph Jonker, please learn the surname. You never know. You just never know. Uh, I didn't for Paul Hintz. He's doing Paul a favor by picking Paris up. Uh, Paul's Bucky is broken at the moment. So <laughs> interesting that this this beach beach bum character sort of uh, comes to pick Paris up. So Nico leaves him there at the garage. She gives him an envelope that is meant for Paul. She says, give this envelope to your father. She also gives him her number. That also shows that she cares. Okay. But I should obviously would like to think that she's giving her his number because she likes him too. Maybe that's what's going through his head. I don't think that's the case. I think just think she really, really cares. And ook a nommer in dien sy pa gewelddadig raak. So she gives him three things, eh? Alright? An envelope, her number, and a number in case his dad gets violent. So, learn it. That's it. That is what it is. You must learn those details. I'm sorry. Um, she also lets him know that she got some information. There, right there, while they're there, obviously on her phone. That the, the, the case of assault, remember he headbutted that guy in the club, and Saka Biskarachin, damage of business property, was withdrawn. Tegedrak. Tegedrak means withdrawn. So I, should, I should have put that in there. Okay, so at least he doesn't have that to, to stress about. So a little bit of good news there for Boris. Um, Boris immediately asks uh, Steph for a phone. So that he can phone his girlfriend. He hasn't had contact with her for a while. She must be wondering what's going on. But uh, Steph says, no, nope, he's uh, got his instructions. Sorry for you. You don't get a phone. So they drive some, past some putt border. You may have visited this area, a beautiful area. Paradise Strand, Cops in France. So that's where they are turning off to. In the car, we see the first signs of Olga. Which we'll hear lots about in the book. Okay. There is a sarong in Macy Sandala in the buggy. So in this little beach buggy, there's uh, a sarong uh, that they, uh, I'm not sure you know what it is, what they wrap around their waist and that on the beach, the girls, and then the sandals. Okay. It, it belongs to Olga, Steph's a Macy. And as you will see, she's also quite a bit younger than Steph um, and becomes. A fascinating character later on. That's very interesting for the story. Uh, Steph Sportum. So St Steph mocks him. He could see that immediately. See that he was quite fond of Nico, the 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 sergeant. All right, that he was like uh, really um, infatuated with her. Then Boris realizes that he left his iPod on the bus. One of many crises that will still face uh, Boris in this book. And he wants Steph to like, turn around, go get my iPod. But Steph's not the kind of guy that you just like uh, order around. He doesn't take nonsense. He says no, and he swears at Boris. He says, you must be effing crazy. I'm not turning around. You, I'm not your mate. You don't talk to me like that. Oh, I actually took a note. I said, Steph Vashkiung. He warns him that you're not one of my monkeys. You're not one of my friends. You don't talk to me like that. You don't give me orders. Um, I'm not one of your Joburg like town like uh, hip, uh, uh, yuppie buddies. So they take a shortcut, got but see along next to the sea, and and they see a humpback walfus right in the rotsa. So just just a note here. So through the book. There are little things that will act as metaphors or symbols that give meaning to the theme of the book. And they are important. Um, those are the sort of things that I would like to ask in a test or exam. So yeah, here's one quite obvious one. So they see this whale. So they don't just see a whale. It's not just like to full words, to full pages. The whale just represents something. It's a symbol of something. So 
there's no real right or wrong, but obviously it will symbolize something like something like this, perhaps. Um, it's it's a, it's a symbol of his his big problems, his massive, the massive weight, the sheer size of Boris's problems that is weighing on him. Okay, it's like a big, it's a whale of a problem that he has. Okay, so we'll, we'll, I'll keep pointing those out, but if you if you see them, um, yeah. Just take note. Even this buggy, I mean, I thought about taking a note. This beach buggy that now dies, the engine frack, and, and then they must carry the suitcases. Even the buggy dying could represent, like, um, Boris's connection with um, with Joburg dying off finally. He's now with his father. So just be careful that they don't trick you into a question like that. Just keep an open mind about the symbols and things that you find in this book. So that's just the tip. Uh, Steph, so Steph gives a bit of information that is important about Paul. Steph vertelt that Paul saw met him in sy broers in die huis groot geword het. So Paul grew up with Steph and Steph's other brothers. But why? Why? This is important. Omdat Paul se pa is a seiplap in a Paul's dad, so Boris's grandfather, was a drunkard and a wife beater. Okay, so Paul had to go and live with another family. Okay, very important because this gives us some perspective into Paul's character and perhaps some understanding as to why he became abusive towards the very young boys when he was under five years old. Okay. So he warns him, he says, Paul and Steph is just broers, and he warns him that nothing, I'm not going to allow anything to upset or make Paul angry. On Stel is upset, quiet Mark. I'm not going to allow you to come here and rock the boat between me and my adoptive brother almost okay so they're closer than friends they grew i literally grew up together okay and then there's some questions that i'm going to leave you with uh, if you struggle with them just pop me a whatsapp or something or an email i'll help you out but i'm sure your teacher will be all over this um and it'll really just give you the gist of the chapter so let's just move on because I know these videos get long very, for some reason, get quite long very, very quickly. Um, I'm just going to make this bigger for you. Uh, up to 18, that should be fine. Okay, we're still 8. So let's see that we're still recording. Yes, 23 minutes already. So the Bagasi rock to swore. It's because they're carrying the stuff now, remember? Okay. Uh, the beach buggy died. Now they now they walk literally walking with the luggage. Okay, rock the sword and Steph sailing with funny tasse along the patos. Just leave it next to the road because they're driving the back roads eh, next to the beach uh, on the sand roads. Okay, Steph wants to leave the guitar as well. But Barry say, Hey, you're not leaving my guitar. You have no idea how th expensive this thing is. It's three thousand seven hundred dollars that will be paid for it. Steph makes a quite insightful comment. Uh, that you must please learn and remember. His, his comment is that say, Ma and Pa buy a betalet on skilled gevoelens. Your mom and pa, dad paid a lot to, to soothe their feelings of guilt. Okay, so they were lacking as parents and they tried to make up for it by buying expensive gifts. Okay, I think all parents will uh, make that. I do it with chocolates with my kids. Uh, if I feel I've been a bad parent, I'll buy them stuff to eat, which is probably even worse. Uh, so eventually they come out by Sea Plus. They eventually arrive at Sea Plus. This is the this is the plot of land where Paul lives, the, the one that he bought with the inherited money. A barefoot man walks out. He wears one of those pants that come up to your knees, sleeveless t-shirt, 
<laughs> otherwise known as a wife beater t-shirt um, some of my friends told me that because I like to wear them and it's uh, I think it's an awful name for a shirt but yeah quite insightful that he wears that he has tattoos okay tattoos everywhere muscular arms gespierde arms quite long blonde hair dark brown eyes and the sun and wind lot at Lake of a mere as 12 year old it's like it makes it look like he's more than 12 years old oh, 12 uh, yeah more than the 12 years since he last saw his dad okay so if they ask you to describe Paul's forecomes his appearance those are the thing you, things you need to list and you need to learn it so go from the skin to, to the feet to the pants to the sh to the shirt to the tattoos um, to the eyes, to the hair, you must be able to describe the whole human being there. Um, but his veil, of course, to be expected, he refuses to shake his hands and he says, yeah, don't expect me to call you father. Beautiful house built out of rock, tree, tree stumps, wood, timber, duck bulker, okay, roof rafters, and a grass duck thatch. And everywhere are these wooden and stone statues or, or, or images. Uh, Paul built the house himself. So inherited the plot of land, however, he built the house himself. Bias vomits in the in the outside toilet. It's like a long drop toilet. And he also has diarrhea. And this is from the pie. Okay. I, <laughs> At first, when you read the book, you think it's just because of the shock of seeing his father and the emotional, being emotionally overwhelmed. However, it's not necessarily just that. Okay. Paul explains that they're not going to have electricity for two days. And, and again, there's a symbol. Okay. There's a symbol that his, he is going to be cut off from Johannesburg properly. Okay. Uh, Paul eventually gives him a mixture of Devil's Drak, uh, that horrendous tasting uh, medicine, um, and that Jamaica Gimmer, just for his stomach. A little laugh for Boris. So they both laugh at Boris because he's sick from that pie. And, and Harper Stay had the reputation of men's sick to mark. It has the reputation of making people ill. Uh, but he's basic and he I wonder of Nico geworden. He wonders about Nico, and that just shows us that Boris is quite a inherently caring, um, nurturing sort of soft person. He does care about other people. It's not that he's just like this hardcore drug addict that doesn't care about anything. Also, the fact that he wants to really, really wants to phone Lizette. I feel the following morning for say phone. Maar die batterij is pap om met die kracht nog af is. No battery, no electricity. Frustration. A schilderij. This is our second sort of uh, allusion to um, Olga. There's a painting of her. Van der Macy met a Carl Boerlijf. Boerlijf's top. It's very erotic sort of uh, painting. Met a sarong. Laat Barry star. Makes her stare. He recognizes the sarong. As Augustin, he recognizes that piece of clothing that was in the buggy, remember, in the painting. So he's like, wow, this is a, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful girl. He hasn't seen her in real life yet. It's coming, don't worry. The builder and Paul says is half means half rots. So he has these images, and, and this, this also is quite a rich symbol. I didn't take a note of that. I should have probably, hey. Half rock, half human. Okay, so it's human beings coming out of something hard. So it could symbolize humans or people overcoming something extremely hard, a really difficult time in their lives and climbing out of that rock. So can you see how all these little things have meaning in the book? So watch out for that when you read in class. And then there's another painting of Olga where she's baking in the sun. Okay, so two. The calendar. Reads, 2nd of December. Okay, we go right up to and past Christmas in the book. So it's about a month, eh? A month is enough time for things to go either very right or very wrong. Paul, he has a habit. He uh, he ticks off. Every day that he doesn't drink, he marks it off. 
on a calendar. He hasn't had a drink for two years. That's quite a long time to be sober. Op 26 November, seen Barry say Nam. What is that significance of that? That's of course his birthday. Okay, so he sees that his that's how his father still keeps record of he still keeps track of his birthday. Barry's vrouw of Paul nog steeds zijn brandewijn en zijn matras wegsteekt. He asks if Paul still hides his brandy in his uh, in his mattress. And Paul says that, yeah, he still still has that habit. I don't know why he would do this, though. If he's been sober for two years, why keep Brandy around in the house? Why keep it in the mattress? It's almost like he does keep a back door open for for when the wheels come off and he can reach for that for that Brandy. By this time, Boris is withdrawing uh, from, he really needs to smoke. Okay, he needs to smoke uh, Dacha, he needs to smoke Ecstasy. Um, he warns Paul that he might just, let's say, kop kan eitak, that he can really go crazy. And he, through the book, he keeps challenging Paul the whole time, like, why this? Why did you leave my mom? What, what, what's your story? Um, why didn't you come back? Paul never gives him an answer because he realizes that they are not ready. Baris is not ready. He's still very raw and very angry. And Paul's not ready either. He can sort of sense that the news will not go well. And we can sort of guess from the start that the real truth of what happened is quite significant. It's quite a fundamental life-changing truth about what really happened and why he really left. Because you can't just go, oh, well, uh, it was for because things didn't work out between you and my mom. And uh, it's just like a small thing. Um, he wants to know why uh, Paul left him, and Paul keeps he uses this answer a few times in the book. He, he'll tell Boris when he's ready, when he's ready in Boris Kiriatis. Let's quickly finish with chapter nine for this video. Um, always takes longer than what I would expect. I guess we can't. We have to do it properly or not do it at all. Uh, chapter 9. Remember, all these notes are in the book. Eh? So please uh, get the book from ITSI. Uh, order the book directly or get, get one from CNA. If you, that'll really, really help me as well. Okay. So while Paul is cooking, Boris goes and he powders up the rot, rot gif, the rat poison. Okay. Where did he get the stuff? Butcher. Butcher, remember Butcher? He gave it to Boris. Okay? He told Boris not to give to him. Not too much. So, yeah, this is very, very, very critically important. I'm just going to make this yellow. This is the reason why Boris didn't kon uitwijs nie. He had inlichting wat teen Baris kan gebruik. So this is why Baris, remember when they were driving around in the Opel Cadet and Baris had to point out all the drug points, where all the drug selling points. This is, why must the hamster be on its wheel? The thing is squeaking. Um, sorry about that. Uh, this is why he couldn't give Butch up. Because... Because of this, because of this, he, he bought the poison, the, the murder weapon, as it were, from, from Butcher. So he had that information over him. So very important. Boris, he thought about um, mixing the, the poison with the other spices in the pot. Mariah Haver, he hesitates and he doesn't do it. By this time, he is by desperate, will eat him to ruik. Paul says, interestingly, that he can smoke if he beats him in chess. I say I'm convened and skok. Again, the chess here, clear symbol of something. What would it be? Well, if you think a little bit, um, skok is a symbol, perhaps, of their relationship in Barry's Levin situation. The sort of, there's a chess game going on between between Paul and Barry's in terms of their their father-son uh, relationship and the situation that they're in. Each each part here, are make, they're making moves. They're trying to get one up on each other. That sort of thing. You can expand a little bit on that idea if you'd like. 
So they play best out of three. Uh, Baris is full self-throw. Why is he? Well, oh, that's not how you spell confidence. Uh, sorry. He's full of confidence because he's the school's senior champion. Okay, he's his senior champion, so he knows how to play. Baris can he good branders to any rots to see break from any sitcomer. So in the living room, so just get that picture in your head. In the, li in the living room, he, he can hear the big waves breaking against, uh, or he can see the big waves breaking against the rocks. Also, obviously, a symbol of their stormy relationship. Okay, so I hope you're getting used to these symbols now. Okay, there's a stormy relationship, stormachtige verhouding tussen hom en sy pa. Question is, gaan Baris totaal break, soos een van die branders? So, will he totally break, like one of the waves? So, my suggestion is when you write your essay on, on, on arson, is that you use these symbols and these insights. That'll just like, you'll milk the marks, you'll, you'll do so well. It's, it's like the, the insight and the things that the, the markers want to see, that you really understand the story. So, if you can combine that with the correct uh, references to the text, that's an A. That's just an ASA. That's 85, 90, 90% if you can do that. So after five matches, Baris could win two. Um, I think, um, yeah, then Paul made some coffee and then they played again. Uh, you could see the, the, the boats, the Choka boats, the squid um, boat lights in the, in the, in the distance and he fared there. After seven games, Baris tips the board over. Okay, he flips it over and he goes and lies in his bed. The storm weer hou nie op nie. The stormy weather does not go away that evening. Definitely a reflection of the stormy mood or the stormy state of mind that Baris is in. Symbol van Baris is stormachtige gemoed. Baris sniffle in Paulse kamer rond. Then he goes and he looks around in Paul's room. He sees three photos. There's a wedding photo of Paul with his second wife. The, the groom looks like he's uh, hungover. He brought a home like his babalas. There's a baby photo of Paris. And a photo with Paul's with construction workers by the union building. So they might ask you which three photos. Okay. So you must learn it, learn it, just learn it. There's no other way if you want to do well here, yeah, you must learn it. In the uh, in the little drawer, he finds women's magazines and a pair of pink slippers. He also finds art magazines in a shoebox. So they might ask you the three things that shows that Paul had a relationship with a woman that is no longer there. Okay, they could ask that. He also finds this little blue teddy bear that disappeared long ago. And he finds his little self-made cards and little sketches, cards and in, in sketches that he sent to his father. Obviously, when his father left, he mailed him. He made little cards, little sketches, little drawings that he sent to his father. So he's like quite surprised to find this, that his dad kept all of this. So this must be quite confusing because his, in his head, he's, he wrote off his father. He hates him. He wants to poison him with rat poison. And now he's seeing, hmm, my father actually kept all those little letters and things. So all of this makes Boris very sad. Then he finds the bottle of Richelieu. This is brandy, eh? In the mattress. Now he's ground up the the poison already. He shakes. Why is he shaking? He's nervous. He's about to commit a murder. <laughs> Potential murder. Okay, he's about to kill his father. He shakes. He's nervous. When he, shit, when he puts the rat poison in the bottle of brandy and he shakes it. Okay. Now he feels. Baris feel that they know in sky for us. There's again a reference to a move. Almost like that chess game. Okay, that we had. Yeah, he feels, hmm, finally I'm one move ahead of, of Paul. Okay, I think that was more than long enough. I'll try to make uh, make another video soon, but that should keep, keep you going for now. Please uh, remember to...
get the book, all the notes are in there. Get it at CA, ITSA, it's 100 Rand at ITSI. I think it's reasonable. Also, your, all your poem notes are in there. And check out all the poem videos. And please like and subscribe. Please share uh, the link on your WhatsApp status if you don't mind. All right, we'll kill it there. Um, thanks for that. And we'll chat very, very soon.